So today I've decided to play a little bit of the um, buffed German armor. Um, I can officially say that the 360 alpha with 8 second reloads, this is going to be my first match inside my VK. I enjoy my VK a lot. I actually 3 marked this tank with standard rounds only. Um, yeah, this is the most comfortable that these reloads have ever been with the damage type that they have. 8.2 seconds. Originally this was like 7.8 at 320. But a little bit of an increase to my reload has not affected this tank in the slightest. At least I'm hoping it hasn't. This is going to be my first match inside of it in a fat minute, though. Um, the last time I played was uh, during my Charlemagne video. I think I've only put like three matches in the day, but these are really comfortable reloads. My hands are killing me today, and I had to go pick up a cabinet <laughs> that's over 100 years old and be super gentle with it. So you can imagine how that went. It's fine, though. Turned out really good. All right, let's pull up on the left side here. Also, I'm not playing without premium time, so I'm kind of ecstatic about that. I'm not going to be buying premium time either. I actually want to see what the uh, free-to-play experience is. I can definitely say though that I my Tiger Two, I lost eighteen thousand firing six premium shells and dealing three thousand damage. So little bit sad about that. 391. That's nice. This is where the E75 TS, T54E2, and the Basante should be up for the reloads. Basante around the range of like, I wouldn't say 8 seconds, but like maybe 9.5 on its best reload would really help that thing out. Did, it, did he bounce? Oh, they are bouncing. I'm at a good angle. I'm not super worried about my side. That actually made me jump. I don't know why. Mm. Borsig in the back. I want to be a little bit careful with. That's a good angle, though. The sides were at that uh, extreme angle. Tiger 1 pulling over. If I'm going to be honest, though, I kind of don't feel like these tanks really needed the love. If they wanted to really give the um, Tiger 2 some love and appreciation, they could have buffed the Under Armour from 25 to 40. Just because whenever I see a Tiger, my the main thing that I think about whenever I'm versing a Tiger is like um, overmatching that side armor from the front. And that's the biggest downside to that tank. And... Honestly, probably the only thing it really needs a buff on. If they were to bring the underskirt armor up a tad bit, it would make that tank extremely good. The armor buff it got is pretty much really all that they needed. Like, the 245 turrets on these is really strong. The reloads are good, and now they're even better than what they were prior. I want to be a little bit careful with T29. Just because I'm running 200 pin... I mean, I got the armor. I should be able to play aggressive. Plus, I like the armor design of these tank of the uh, 45A, just because of the way it's slanted up in the front, front-mounted turret. Really making this thing comfortable to move around in. Oh, that Borsig is still up. Let's go for track. You know, I do need to play the Tiger P. I wanted to make a video on the Tiger P forever ago because that thing is an absolute monstrosity if you play it correctly. Same thing about the Ferdinand. There's a couple of tanks on the list that are actually really good. And I just realized my audio is not in. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> Doing that little recording test over on Helldivers was um, actually really um, eye opening for me. And then switching back and realizing that all my settings got reset again, which means I have to physically remember what my PC recording settings are and what my um, graphics card capture card setup recording settings are. So there's a possibility this is going to look a little bit weird. Maybe. I hope not. But the buffs on these, I don't really feel like they were needed. Uh, in, in all honesty, the way that... I mean, if they want to talk about, like, a better grind, make it to where we can spend experience on individual components rather than being forced to grind out each individual one with a set in mind. 
make it to where, like, if I want to unlock my uh, turret first, I can unlock the turret first. Or if I want to unlock the engine first, I can unlock the engine first. That's the way it should be. Ooh, that's unfortunate. IS-2 two is not upgraded. I mean, all honesty, is that an 85mm? I think it is an 85mm starting off on that. 85 is a good gun. Really good gun. But it's really good in tier 6 more than it is tier 8. Oh, well, that's a good game. 3,600 damage. I'm actually kind of wondering. I made 34,062 with premium. Metal wise, 93.55. Good. Uh, four marking, I don't really care for four marking. It, to me, that's kind of just a little bit of a waste. Sand River up next. So the Tiger P, uh, the reload increases. Um, yeah, I, I guess there's that. Tiger 2. I'm a little bit disappointed, though. Uh, they were talking about buffing German armor, except for they always tend to forget about the American version of this as well. The uh, captured King Tiger still has 240 alpha. So it's like, if you guys are going to be buffing up all the alphas of all these other tanks, don't forget about the American. Because that American version also is going to need a little bit of love too. Just because you run the stock gun in this, and it should be similar to the Tiger 2. Captured Tiger, that is. I mean, they're two separate guns, because I believe the Tiger 2 has a... Uh, the base variant, and then the captured... King Tiger has the uh, later date model. The FV got a buff on the side panels. I'm actually going to be talking about that after this match. Going over a couple of things. and uh, The fact that I don't like that they buffed the side panel on it. Same thing about the Panzer 7. I got a few things I got to say about that. Not positive. Never going to be positive on seeing weak spots get buffed. MX-1390. I should be able to snap them. Ow. But pulling over is not a good idea. We can technically do a scout real fast. Ability pop. Don't see anything. This can be a long match. Ooh. Need to fix that reverse. That was slightly down, but it said I'm going forward. Right, the barrel's out, but not the turret. There we go. Get a little bit higher up. Seven eighty, pulling up at the downside. Um Okay, three sixty with the reload that this thing is offering is really good. That's unfortunate. Was it like 7.8 seconds? 7.7? 7.8? Yeah, see, and originally it was like 7.2. I mean, <laughs> I've talked about the Tiger II in the past. I've talked about how this thing is an absolute monstrosity. And then the 0.5 second increase that they did in the reloads in exchange for 40 additional alpha. Yeah, this is the comfortable reload that I was talking about that the E75TS would absolutely enjoy. Uh, speaking of which, somebody put a comment down in my videos mentioning that they did buff these. I wasn't even paying attention to anything on the website or anything. In all honesty, I stopped caring about what they post on the website. But as soon as that was mentioned, my goal today was to get on and play and check out these... Um, buffed up versions because I wanted to see what it was going to be like and surprisingly enough I was kind of skeptical at first because a buff like that and then decreasing the reload a lot of people get used to those faster reloads and I was kind of hoping that they didn't murder the reload on this because if you jump in my Tiger 2 for me is all about those good reloads and faster, just the faster rate of fire to be able to track and lock down. Yeah, 8.1 seconds without the consumable in play. But since that was um, utterly changed, yeah, a couple of problems. I think he out-reloads me. Nice. And I hit his barrel too, which means um, 
There's a high possibility I was going to survive that shell he's going to throw my way. 145. I did make a little bit of a misplay there. Talking and not playing. A little bit of a brain fart and confusion on my end. Nine rounds left. Ah! Uh, you know, the Panzer 7. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over that buff. And the FV as well. It's definitely two I gotta go over. Critical hit, so those are tracks. Do gotta be careful. Right side's got a Cobra. E-75 is still looking that way. Maybe not. And where'd you go through? Right through the top plate? I'm going to take a guess and say right through the top plate. And look, a gold mark 780. And he fired APCR to tier 8. See, and that's the thing about it. You guys want gold mark? Just load nothing but gold. There's a reason why it's a gold mark. It's all about firing nothing but gold. So the hall panels, um, armor model 15, so armor position 15 for the FV. I'm going to quickly bring this up on console. It was originally 110 millimeters here on the left and right side of the hall armor. Those were considered weak spots originally, and at 254 millimeters now, they are no longer weak spots. So originally, if this thing was side scraping, your tier 8s would be able to go through this reliably with standard rounds. And now, even with premium... You're not guaranteed to pin this anymore. It is out the window now. So rather than balancing in accordance to like um, tier eights and like what where tier eights are technically aiming, uh, speaking of which, inside the module viewer, there's actually nothing behind these. So whenever they got hit, there was nothing damaged. The fuel tank is still in the front right there. That's a fire exposure right in the front armor. Um, the FE turret, the gun, the radio is in the turret, the crew, the ammo is underneath the turret on the left, yeah, left side of the turret, from whenever you're inside of it, right side of the turret, whenever you're not inside of it, so you can high explosive splash this side and deal some damage to it, but taking these weak spots away is a big no-no, <laughs> like massively no-no, this is not what this tank needed, what this tank needed more than anything was ammunition, 35 rounds, um, a lot of times people are going to play way more aggressive inside this tank because they have a lack of ammunition, so they want to get in close. They want to guarantee those pins, um, as we saw from the last match that I was in, that FV just decided to charge in. And now looking at the Panzer VII, uh, this one for me, I was a little bit dumbfounded. Panel 17 at 300 millimeters. And panel 18, so you got 17 and you got 18 here on the side of the uh, turret. Um, 240 300 millimeters. Okay. If you're pulling around a corner and you're trying to side scrape instead of a Panzer 7, you're playing the Panzer 7 wrong. Whenever you pull a Panzer 7, this is actually the right angle. Uh, maybe not the right angle. This is actually the wrong angle. All right. This is the Panzer 7 versing itself with APCR 315 millimeters loaded. Watch that lower plate. Oh my. Wow. Pulling a corner like this and exposing your front side, your lower plate, your top plate, top plate 240 millimeters, um, lower plate 230 millimeters, 300 on the uh, bar right here, and then auto ricochet in the under armor at 160 millimeters of effective armor to 72 degree impact, 45 degree impact here, 60 degree impact, and then 30 degree. Over angle, expose the front, they fire into it, they bounce, you pull a corner like this, Everyone's going to be aiming here thinking that they can pin this, but in fact, that's 160 millimeters of side armor. They have problems. Then you come around the corner, then you point your gun right at the target. And now keep in mind, let's say you're actually playing this effectively and you're poking a corner like this. Your sides are completely defended because you're poking around in such a way that is defending your side. Now you can poke out effectively without ever needing to expose the armor on the rear end of the turret. This is the way the Panzer 7 is supposed to be played. That's why the turret's a weak spot in a lot of places because your hull armor is what you rely on. If they wanted to really buff the Panzer 7, the number one thing that they could have done was simply increase the lower armor and increase the top plate. For instance, PC at 230 millimeters, 
console, 300, 240 top plate, and then 230 millimeter lower plate. The play style still has not effectively changed. The turret is still technically a weak spot. Um, to me, this armor buff is just going to make people always try to side scrape inside this. And side scraping inside this tank is a big no go. However, this is additional defense for your ammo rack that's underneath the turret. But you see, the thing is, is that they buffed a position that's going to be not super effective. As you can see right here, that side armor plate's 160 millimeters still. So technically, whenever they pull the corner and they load a heat round, that ammo rack is still going to get hit either way. It's just a new location to be aiming at now. And that's all it's going to be. So rather, whenever they pull the side and you're loading heat rounds, your goal is to aim here now rather than here. So for me, um, what irritates me about this is the fact that this was a tier eight weak spot. That tier eight weak spot no longer exists. It is physically gone now, which means if you're in a tier eight going against this, if you're in a tier eight going against this, you're going to be having a really bad time now because this weak spot, which is 180 millimeters in some spots, uh, 200 millimeters is no longer a weak spot. This is <laughs> anti tier eight, anti fun. Uh, this thing has become the fun please for tier eights whenever it's going against it. So now where you want to aim effectively is going to be into the turret, inner turret ring, specifically the inner turret ring, the outer ring. You're going to get too thick of armor and it's also auto ricochet in some angles or the outskirts here, 200 millimeters. But your best goal is at distance. Easiest place is on the inside here. Easier shots on the right side. Right side actually has a bigger explosion. Because if you look, the gun mantle on the left kind of has this cutoff right here, while the right side has got about an extra four inches or so that you can hit. So it's a bigger spot on the right side whenever you're aiming at it. Um, so yeah, those are the two tier 10 buffs, and I'm not even going to be playing these tanks because, to me, this was ridiculous. There was no point to buff the armor here or buff the outskirts there. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. And... Why is it that Germany got another buff, yet there are other lines in the game that need love? Like, to me, I don't understand why the Tiger II needed a buff. This was technically one of the strongest tanks in the game at the time, like, just as of recently. And frontal armor from 100mm to 150mm on the Tiger I hammer, specifically the hammer, um, if it was the actual tech tree Tiger I, I would have been a little bit irritated because they always talk about how they, they like to go after realism, setups, everything else. So the frontal armor in this being um, 100 millimeters. All right, so it says, okay, turret frontal armor, 150. What was it originally? From 100? Ouch. All right, so that's going to be effective. I mean, if it was the hall armor... Oh, that's right. I read it earlier today. I'm being a Muppet. If it was the hall armor on the, the hammer, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> in all honesty um but 100 millimeters is not bad uh 150 180 it's nice to see that they actually did buff the turret on this one because you have the tiger 131 which has 100 this is also preferential matchmaking you have the standard tiger that's uh, 180 150 then you have your additional spaced armor sets there you get 50 and 40 all right it's not bad tiger one now has 2 240 damage. Okay, so they unequipped all my guns and now I have to pay silver for every single one of these. And after watching my last video, I wasn't refunded any silver for the gold ammo that I had or anything. And I think maybe they might have refunded me. I'm not 100% sure, but the fact that I had to spend silver on each one of these tanks to be able to get the gun back was a little bit irritating. Because it, think about it, you log on first day and you're like, I want to play my VK and you're, you have the stock gun because that's what the gun that equipped was. So whenever I loaded up, the first gun that I had access to was the stock gun. Could you imagine you logged on never reading the update notes and the first thing that happens is I had the wrong screen up the entire time uh, showing off a completely different segment because people are trying to call me and then come in my room. And them having a brain fart. Um, yeah, that's pretty much 
everything that I, I, I had to go over today. Uh, the VK4502P, uh, the B7, this one, on the other hand, this tier 9, they should have increased its top speed to 35. If they wanted to give this thing a legitimate buff, a 35 top speed would have been the proper way to um, bring this up to par because the E75 relies on mobility and the most recent buff to this was 265 from 252 millimeters of effective armor on the turret. Uh, yeah, then you got 252 on the inside here, so that's what it originally was. They buffed it up to 265. And that was the only buff the E75 ever got. Uh, the VK4502B, on the other hand, well, 265, they also gave this thing a little bit of a thicker turret, but the speed that this thing has is what kills it. And I forgot that I put the uh, Tiger camo on this because it's actually a really good tank. It's also smaller than the E75. If you had these both out, this thing's actually a lot smaller. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this of uh, what I talked about. Um, I would like to see the E75TS and the T54E2 get buffed. Specifically, just the reloads on these tanks is all they really need to um, account for. The autoloader on this, you can leave it alone, but just bring the reload of the um, 105 on this down to like 8.8 .8 seconds. And please don't forget about the King Tiger, the Captured King Tiger. Uh, 240 Alpha on this one compared to all the others is... Come on, guys. There's multiple King Tigers in the game. Don't forget about one of them. Now, last time it took you guys an extra couple of days to get the armor on this one as well. So hopefully you guys get the armor. Hopefully you get the uh, damage on the Captured King Tiger. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you. Um, I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, I'm going to be jumping back on the game now and start working on the season pass. I'm going to be playing without premium time, so please do not gift me any premium time. I am going to go over and see what the uh, economy is like without having premium because someone was telling me that there is a big difference between having premium and not having premium, that it actually falsifies the amount that you earn set of matches. And I want to check it over and then go over some older replays and check out the math on it and see if it adds up correctly. Anyways, till next time, you guys, I'm out.